I've found that as I've improved my video quality, new problems emerge. And the biggest one I've had recently is that I want to maintain eye contact when I'm talking to people on Zoom or during a podcast. Um, so I need to be looking into my camera lens. But now, because I've got this big camera, my camera lens is over to the side of the screen. Um, so if you're on my screen, uh, then to reassure you that I'm paying attention, I have to be looking. I have to be looking into the camera lens when I want to look at your face and see what your face is doing. And, and it's just, it sets up this weird conflict. I've seen some people solving this problem and today I decided, uh, I, th I noticed a way that I could solve this for relatively cheaply. And um, so here's what I have figured out. So this is what I'm looking at right now is uh, a teleprompter and it has a cheap little uh, HDMI display mirrored up there so that I can see what's going out and um, that's just connected to my to my Mac as an HDMI display. So this screen was pretty cheap. It was sort of £69, so maybe not cheap, 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 but um, not too bad. But I did talk to some people today and they recommended Lilliput uh, 4K displays. And I think there's good reasons for doing that, which I will uh, mention in a minute. Um, otherwise, you can just use an iOS device, an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you, running Duet, which is an app that you install on your Mac install on your phone and then it lets your phone connect over USB as an external display just like anything else um, so and then here's what that's going to look like in system preferences you've got your displays this is my main window and then this is the phone like that and you can set that up so you've got here's my big one and then here's the smaller one and you can just set what you want that to look like in system preferences on the Mac but what you can't do is make it flip just natively so we need this to to be sort of upside down or back to front this device actually has a little uh, has a hardware option where you can rotate it by 180 degrees but actually you need something that's going to flip it properly and I know that the Lilliput displays have a proper teleprompter mode and Duet if you pay for a subscription lets you flip it the, the way I'm talking about um, but actually it's not so hard to deal with if you're you know, if, if you're looking at the mirrored faces on the screen, if you can just get your head around dragging a window the wrong way round, which I've been doing today, it's, it's, it's not too big a deal. Um, and so that's, that's kind of how I'm living now. I've just kind of got the hang of when, when I drag a window, it goes the wrong way when it's on the other display and all the menus are backwards. But, you know, it's not a problem because I'm interested in the faces and the eye contact. Um, so to get this uh, to get this going in Ecamm, uh, here's my Ecamm window. Um, you can you can you can pull up the uh, program uh, window, which gives you an, another display which goes over here. But actually, I've started just uh, dragging my whole Ecamm window over so that I can press record and just see when it's recording on the external plate display too. Because it's just a, you know it's a HUD that gives you lots of information. So you know you know the more the better really. So. To go into a bit more detail why I've uh, done this was something I wanted to add. I had a conversation over email with someone that uses uh, was interested in BeatSheet. Um, so I've added a desktop HUD window that lets you have a teleprompter without needing the iOS companion app now. And that looks like this. So, so if we find my BeatSheet, this is my script. This is what I'm running through right now. And um, what I could do is drag the... Uh, program window from Ecamm so that you can still see me. So yes, there we go. Um, so I'm actually using the program window on my desktop now and I'm using the, the, the real Ecamm window on the computer. But here's, here's BeatSheet and um, uh, this is this is the, the script I'm running through right now and this now has a desktop HUD so I can just go show desktop HUD and this gives you this invisible window so it might be a little bit weird but you can resize this window if you can find the edges and uh, you can see here it'll be it'll look something like this and we can just go flip we can have it we can we can flip the text so even though i can't flip my external display i can still flip the text on the hud and and the faces will be mirrored but the text will be legible and um, so that's going to look like that and we can yeah you know, we can zoom in and you know change the size of that text as well um so now I can do all my beat sheet stuff, uh, but still use shoot on my iPhone. So I've got I've got shoot running on there so that I can show you what's going on sort of elsewhere. Um, but 
Something else you could do is uh, drag your audio levels. So you could take your Ecamm audio levels window and just pull that over onto the external display and then you, you'd, you'd have an indicator. Or if you had a more advanced sort of waves, you know, like, um, uh, you know, a more sophisticated audio meter, you could you could drag that over. And um, so here you can see, you know, that that's what this is what that's going to look like if I can just find the uh, audio levels window. Um, yeah, you, there, there it is. Look down there. Like here's my there are my audio levels um, just sort of um, kicking away. Uh, that, that would be easier to show. It's, it takes a bit of juggling. I, I won't lie, but. Um, and um, this is just the first day of me figuring this out, really. But just anything that is running on the Mac can go onto that screen. And this just lets me do that all important thing of maintaining eye contact with whoever I'm talking to. Um, something else I just wanted to mention, this teleprompter, it's, it's, it's sort of relatively compact. But the problem is, if I zoom out, if I zoom the lens out now, we're going to get um, uh, this is going to happen. So if I zoom we're going to get this whole frame around the camera image, which we don't really want. So, so, so watch out the size of your teleprompter is important. Um, or get one that mounts onto the camera lens so that it stays attached to the lens. But you just watch out what you're going to load onto that. So an iPad mini, probably OK still. But I, I haven't tried it. But I, d I like that this is a solid teleprompter that I can put on a little tripod, but the, there's the problem with it, which is that it sort of limits how, how far I can come in and out uh, with my Zoom. But anyway, I'll put links below to everything I've discovered. And um, if you're interested in BeatSheet, uh, that's available at squares.tv slash BeatSheet. And um, hopefully I don't get told off for having a call to action on a video like this on the Ecamm communities. But, you know, just let me know if it's a problem. I just, you know, I, I feel like I've learned some stuff that goes beyond this today. So I wanted to share that. But also, like, I, I'm trying to solve real problems that I'm talking to people who use Ecamm and uh, learning their pain points and trying to sort of like bring some, some new stuff to the table that helps. So if you find this interesting, you can come there or just comment and just let me know what you think and I will see you soon. There is a YouTube channel for this as well if you want to subscribe there and we can, you know, you can sort of, uh, you can see some of the other tutorials I've put together there. Um, so thank you for uh, watching and I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.